Went to counselling and I hated it. Uh, and that was it really, and I didn't want to speak to anyone about it. Across the country, there's a knife crime on average every 11 minutes. Hundreds of people lose their lives. It causes enormous pain to loved ones. I was lucky. I survived and came away without any life-changing injuries. So we stood around where you are now and holds a blade down by my gut. It stabbed me twice in the head, and then I felt him stab me in the face, and he stabbed me just under the eye there. I just blacked out. That was it. I can't remember anything. There was a moment when I was thinking, am I going to be blind? I remember thinking, am I going to die? Am I, am I going to bleed out? Over the last eight years, I've made documentaries about young people and violence. But I've hardly spoken to anyone about my experience of being stabbed. I don't want to carry this anymore. I need to find out how other people are learning to live with their scars. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, everybody from Gloucester. Today, I'm just doing a little outreach video. I'm just letting everybody know, putting the noise down, it's still going. We collect weapons and we take them down to the police stations. Do you mind if I ask you about the scar on your face? Yeah, I was attacked with a blade. I was, I was just out with my girlfriend at the time, and um, yeah, I've been offered out for a fight. I didn't really want to do it, but me being with my girlfriend, I wanted to, uh, wanted to show the big I am, you know? And um, I agreed to it. And then from there, I just got absolutely annihilated. I couldn't eat. I had to force myself to eat with a straw. I was upset that my face had been deformed. It was a really hard time for like a period of probably about six weeks. What happened to Jasper still feels really raw for him. Despite that, he quickly responds to a text that comes in about a weapons collection. Hey Jasper, I have a few knives I need disposed of. Would it be possible to arrange collection? Each one of these knives could inflict so much physical and emotional damage. Hiya. Jasper hands over weapons, but that's it. He never gives up any information about who or where he collects the knives from. And do they tell you why they're carrying? So as much as I can really say is they don't want to be carrying weapons anymore. OK. Sometimes I do look at the weapons and it makes you think, like, Jesus Christ. It could literally just be a split second and instantly I'm feeling weary, I've got bad anxiety going on. Or it just brings back a memory from the past and you don't really enjoy it, but then you, you have to self-realise that what you are doing is stopping somebody else from going through the same experiences that I've gone through. I really admire Jasper. Putting himself back into these environments seems to be rewarding, but also triggering at times. I wonder if digging up the past will be worth it. While there's no shortage of people bragging about stabbing someone, hardly anyone's speaking about actually being stabbed. There's one guy who's different. He's an influencer and entrepreneur. <laughs> Hello, mates. Hey, mate. How, How are you? Are you, good? you right? How are you? Good. good. This is uh, the pit gym. This is where so, the magic happens. This is where the magic happens, yeah. <laughs> I buried my experience for years. But Kieran couldn't be more different. This is where the knife went in, this bit here. And then obviously this is like open heart surgery, so they had to cut me open. Basically sort my heart out, basically. Got that one round there, where they drown my lung. And then the two there must be like. What do you see now when you look in the mirror and you see your scars? Uh, see a fucking weapon. <laughs> see someone who, you know what I mean, he's been through something, come out the other side and then just... He's with part of me now, do you know what I mean? It's just like having a tattoo. How many years after being stabbed did you start to speak about it publicly? Probably like four, I'd say. Um, it wasn't... Look, it weren't easy, but it got better every time I spoke about it. Your experience is fully interwoven into the business as well. Yeah, yeah. Is the scar kind of the brand now? Yeah, I think because I think it's such a big part of why I am the way I am and why I do what I do. So it's important that like people know where that come from and the origin story of like everything. Did you ever get therapy? Nah, well, I went to victim support initially and I hated it. I went to counselling and I hated it. Uh, and that was it really. I didn't want to speak to anyone about it. Why didn't you like counselling? 
Just make you feel like a victim. It was very like, there, there, like, you're so brave, like, it's okay to feel the way that you're feeling, da, da, da. and I was like, it's not what I want to hear right now. What I want to hear is, get your shit together, man up and fucking get on with it. I feel how I feel. Do you know what I mean? I want to feel different. I don't care about how this is feeling. I want to go, I want to make myself feel better. How do I do that? What are the steps I need to take to make myself feel better? For me, it was hard to talk at first. I can't imagine celebrating my attack or feeling at peace with it. I wonder if that comes from a sense of injustice. It's not really possible to make sense of a senseless act. All of your hurt and fear comes from one person. For me, with my perpetrator, I still carry anger a hundred percent when I think about him and I just think I've held on to this for too long. I want to try and find a way to, to let go. So part of me is thinking about whether I should consider trying to have some sort of contact with my perpetrator.